So the uh, let me start out with the result. Here's the result. Oops, that's too wrong. Um, let me click on that. Um, let me start out with the result that he derived. So. The result that he derived, you can find it in your book, chapter six, black body radiation. Ah. So, um, you know, read through it and um, this is the plot you're seeing. Uh, when, this is describing Vin's displacement law. Um, and uh, yeah, Vin's displacement law. Um, yeah, Stefan Boltzmann law, whatever, whatever. So those are all experimental laws. People were just finding those experimentally because black body is common. Easy to measure, you can discover all those things experimentally. So where people were running into the problem was, how do you actually understand this? And the Rayleigh-Jeans law, the first attempt at it, failed because you, it resulted in ultraviolet catastrophe. So the question was how to handle the, the short wavelength or high frequency case and this is the result, this is a Planck law for black body radiation. That's what they derived. And um, in order to derive this, yeah, I will write it down on the board. In order to derive this expression, I'm putting this on the board because that's the one expression I don't have memorized. <laughs> Everything else memorized. <laughs> so to derive this, Planck had to make an assumption. So this is Planck's assumption, he assumed um, assumed this way. So, you know, when you have this um, object which is radiating electromagnetic radiation, you can think of it like uh, this uh, containing some hypothetical oscillators. As in, you know, imagine you have, I'm just drawing it schematically. Imagine I have some electron here which is going to be vibrating back and forth, and as it vibrates, it emits electromagnetic radiation, right? So this is my um, oscillator. It's kind of a model for this object, and it's a model that's meant to be widely applicable because black, body black bodies are quite common. Our sun is a black body. You are a black body that emits something like a 10 micron wavelength of infrared radiation, yes? What? Um, well, technically, black body is, is an object with an emissivity of one. Uh, that's a, the perfect black body. But black body, in the sense I use the term, as in something that has some non zero temperature, so it emits thermal radiation. Everything is a black body. <laughs> I guess uh, atoms? Okay, I guess a single atom is probably not a black body. But any macroscopic object is a black body. So those black bodies are made up of an oscillator. And this is what Planck assumed. He, he was trying to just come up with a solution where something would limit the amount of energy that can be emitted at the high frequency limit. So he assumed, okay, this oscillator, it can only have energies, only have energies, in discrete units. And he said this discrete unit of energy, um, I, so the whole purpose of introducing this mechanism is to limit the amount of energy at the high end. So you say this discrete unit is, um, this unit is equal to, um, it's proportional to frequency. So that's an important part. And at the beginning, what he did was, well, it's proportional to frequency, so let's say here's a constant of proportionality. And this, uh, um, I guess, I don't know, 
when he initially started the derivation, at least the myth I heard was that he was hoping this would cancel out of the derivation. Like when you do any kind of classical mechanics with the mass, you have masses in there already, hoping that it'll cancel out when you're dealing with the gravity, right? So, but this uh, constant of proportionality didn't end up canceling out. And this is what is today we call Planck's constant. And it's one of the, what is it? One of three fundamental constants of nature, the gravitational constant, speed of light, and Planck's constant. Uh, Planck's constant, but so that's the assumption he made. You can think of it like, uh, I like a money analogy. Uh, imagine someone said this, so um, you know, whatever money you have in your bank account, let's say you can withdraw it all, and let's say they told you the only denomination you can take is a dollar bill. Can you take entire amount of money in your bank account? Well, close to almost the whole amount, okay? What if I told you you could only take it in $100 bills? Maybe depending on how much money is in your bank account. <laughs> now, what if I told you you can only take it out in the denominations of a million dollar bearer bonds? <laughs> Most of us can't take any money out. So that's what this is. That's what the mechanism here is. As the frequency goes up, the discrete unit of energy this oscillator can have gets limited. So uh, at low frequency limit, this uh, limitation wouldn't end amount to anything. So you know, Planck was looking for, okay, two things. One, agreement with the Rayleigh-Jeans law at low frequency. And this kind of accomplishes that because this at low frequencies, this limitation has no effect. It's like somebody forcing you to take your money in dollar bills. Because it's a lot of dollar bills, but you know, you can take all your money that way, close to all of it. But he was looking for at high frequencies to disagree with this, to force the intensity to go down, and this uh, assumption would have forced that to happen. So it's a bit of an ad hoc assumption. Like if someone were to ask a Planck, like why did you assume this? His only answer would have been, well, it gives me the correct answer. <laughs> the correct answer being this. And, um, and uh, I guess uh, I can, let me, I, see I don't have a lot of time. Let me demonstrate the correctness, uh, correctness of that answer. Um, let's see, do I, does it do the plot? Okay, they do a plot, so um, if you want to plot it, you can plot it on your own, you know, put it into Mathematica, and if you just want to plot something numerical, you can just set HC uh, all equal to one, uh, KB, T all equal to one, and just to let lambda be whatever. <laughs> That'll be it. Uh, what I want to use our time for is, I want to show you that, oh, it says it's a left test exercise. Let's try it and see if I can actually do it. <laughs> um, so this is the intensity as a function of wavelength. This is a result that we are hoping for. So if we take this, if we take this intensity as a function of wavelength, and here's one of the experimental laws we know. We know Stefan Boltzmann law, and um, the second one that's in the book is the Vinci displacement law. Let's see if uh, this uh, express, so Rayleigh's law is clearly, it doesn't agree with the Stefan Boltzmann law because it predicts infinite intensity <laughs> at any temperature. So let's see if Stefan, Bo uh, sorry, Planck's law will give the correct, uh, agree with the, let's see if a prediction of Planck's law will agree with the Stefan Boltzmann law. So what we are hoping is that when you take the intensity, and I'm hoping they gave me the correct expression for doing this, integrate it with respect to wavelength, with wavelength going from zero to infinity, I'm hoping the result I get is proportional to t to the fourth power. Yeah. Okay, before I start on that, let me make sure I have correct units. For this to work out correctly, so I'm going to need to have, so this is supposed to be equal to this. This is supposed to have unit of intensity or power per area 
or which would be joules per meter squared second. That's the unit I'm supposed to have. So the unit of I as a function of lambda they've given me, it's supposed to be intensity density. So this is supposed to be this whole thing divided by wavelength or meter. So this is supposed to be unit of joules per meter cubed the second. Let me make sure that's what they gave me. So, oh, uh, I guess I didn't give you, um, so Planck's constant, um, can anyone guess what the unit of Planck's constant should be from all the information you have so far? So this is a discrete unit of energy. So what is the unit on the left-hand side? Joules. So I have frequency here. So what's the unit for Planck's constant? Joules second. So that's the unit for Planck's constant. <laughs> um, so I have Planck's constant here. So it's a joule times a second times meter per second squared divided by meter per second to the fifth power. And since these are unitless, I'm going to, well, this is also unitless. So I have a oh, meter to the fifth power cancels that. So I get, um, so I get joule divided by meter cubed. Um, let's see, how does, uh, let me work out the second. So second times second to minus two divided by second to minus five. So, sorry, I, I don't know why. Sorry, thank you. Um, so I don't have that. So, okay, so I have, um, so all of this combines to just over a second. That is the unit I was looking for, right? Okay, so they gave me the correct unit for working this out. And uh, so I want you to just uh, show you a technique uh, using calculus to actually do a calculation like this. Because, uh, the, you know, this is the instinct that um, a lot of people would have in seeing an expression like this. And um, so you are going to integrate this with respect to lambda. Lambda is your variable. This is your variable. And these are the places where you sit. All right, that's fine. I can do that integral. And then you see lambda here. And maybe you think, uh, I don't know how to do that integral. And what I want to show you is um, this can be done. There's a simple substitution you can do. The technique here is whatever you want to integrate, you want to be able to express it as a unitless, parameterless, num numerical quantity. And you can push that off to Mathematica to finish it. Then the rest is what will give you what we are looking for. So that's the technique I want you to demonstrate. Let me do that quickly. It actually won't take that much time. So <laughs> let me do that. So, um, so that's what we are looking for. I already have that there. So let me just uh, copy in that expression and just to start chugging away at it. So it's an integral from lambda equals zero to infinity, that whole thing, two pi hc squared over lambda to the fifth power times one over e to the hc over lambda kbt minus one d lambda. All right, so that's the integral I want to do. So the technique I would use is uh, algebraic substitution. So I want to make this a substitution. I would really like this whole expression to be simply one over e to the x minus one. I feel like it then, um, you know, if this x is just a unitless parameter, then I can just let that be, you know, done by uh, some kind of uh, mathematica, right? So let me um, try doing that substitution. So if I want to do that, then I'm trying to set this equal to x. So my x, so my x is equal to hc over lambda kbt. All right, I need my d lambda to be able to do the substitution. So take the differential, then dx is equal to, uh, these are all constants. 
hc over kbt. And I have this lambda, derivative, derivative of this minus 1 over lambda squared, right? So minus 1 over lambda squared, and then chain rule, get the lambda back. Okay? All right, or let me just solve this for d lambda to make it easier for me. d lambda is equal to minus lambda squared uh, kbt over hc dx. Good. All right, let's uh, do the substitution. Um, oh, I guess uh, there's one more expression that's useful to have. I should have this solved for lambda also, because I'm going to need to use that to get rid of this lambda outside. So say lambda is equal to hc over x kb. All right, let me do the substitution. It's uh, kind of tedious, but not difficult. So this, I don't need the units anymore. This whole thing is equal to, so oh, limits of integration. So when lambda is equal to 0, what is my x equal to? <coughs> infinity, right? Or as lambda approaches 0, x approaches infinity. So let me let um, x go from infinity what about when lambda approaches infinity? X approaches 0, so it goes from infinity to 0. And I'm actually happy to see that because I gained this minus sign in the substitution, and it'll just flip this back the way I kind of want it to be. All right, so let's keep going. 2 pi hc squared. I, um, I think I'm going to convert to three of these factors. Wait, three? Wait, 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 let me. Yeah, I'm going to convert to three of these factors and leave two behind um, to be canceled out by this. Good. So divided by three, um, three of these, or hc over xkbt raised to third power. I still have 1 over lambda squared. I'll clean this up later. That's equal to uh, 1 over e to the x minus 1. Mm, now d lambda, I need to plug this in. Minus lam lambda squared kbt over hc dx. Yeah. Let me do the cancellations that I was hoping for. Lambda cancel, lambda squared cancels. And I've successfully gotten rid of um, um, all the variables except for x. The rest are all you know, para constant parameters. So let me uh, do a bit of a cleanup here. Uh, let me clean up this expression first. So it's going to be. 2 pi, uh, 2 pi hc squared over h squared c, uh, sorry, h to the third, c to the third, h third, c to the third. And then all of this goes on the numerator. So x to the third, kb, k third, t third. All right. Um, times 1, that. And oh, these constant factors um, minus kbt over hc. So I want to just combine all the factors um, so that I, you know, I don't have a bunch running around. So I have uh, kbt to the fourth power. That's what I end up with. Um, this h cancels that. So h to the third power. Um, that cancels that, that cancels c to the second power. I got all the uh, constant vectors correct? All right, so let me rewrite this uh, integral this way. I'm going to flip the limit and let that take care of the minus sign here. So what this integral ends up being is factor all this out of the integral. 
2 pi kb to the fourth power divided by h to the third power times c to the second power. There's a reason I'm writing it this way. I wrote all the constant coefficient except for t. So now I can write t to the fourth power. Let me write down the integral that I left behind. Uh, this is multiplied to the integral with respect to dx, with the x going from 0 to infinity, uh, x to the third power, and uh, 1 over e to the x minus 1. So now, uh, if you ask me, do I know how to do this, to do this integral? I don't know. I guess I could uh, do it with integration by parts if I had to, but I don't feel like I had to because I can recognize at this point this integral, whenever it's done, is going to be unitless, parameterless, dimensionless, numerical quantity, which means I can just do, uh, you can actually do this on your calculator. You don't actually need Wolfram Alpha for that. Graphing calculators can do this because all it is is you're integrating um, x to the cube divided by e to the x minus 1 from x equals 0 to x equals infinity. And um, that will give you some, I don't know, one point of, okay, 6.5. So you can say that, all right, whatever this integral is, this is equal to 6.49. And I have my result. This intensity integrated over all wavelengths is proportional to t to the fourth power. And if everything really works out, this 6.49 times all of this should equal Stefan Boltzmann constant. Um, I guess uh, not enough time to go into photoelectric. Well, yeah, let me do that. I think it, uh, we've spent enough time on this, so <laughs> might as well finish it and get the payoff. So let me just take this. Actually, uh, let me take that number times all these other constant coefficients that I didn't actually get rid of. To pi times Boltzmann constant. Boltzmann constant so to the fourth power divided by Planck's constant to the third power divided by c squared. Um, so I'm expecting something with a unit of joules per meter squared, sorry, uh, watt per meter squared per Kelvin to the fourth power. Right, so hope that's what we are gonna get. So watt per meter squared, yeah, it, it is one Stefan Boltzmann constant. <laughs> well, from is smart enough to know that. <laughs> Good, so that's it. Um, so, so that's, uh, um, so that's uh, uh, Planck's law. And what I want to emphasize at this point is that in order to drive this expression, Planck had to assume this. And um, if somebody asked you, uh, asked Planck, why did you assume this? The only answer he could give was, well, this is why. <laughs> he doesn't have any a priori reason. 